I am Special Agent Donald E. Tyler of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, your host for this gangbuster story. The Holy Bible is part of this case because one man lived by its words and three others scoffed at them. In a moment, I'll tell you more about it. Now, every city has its derelicts, and Huntington, West Virginia is no exception. A 70-year-old Reverend James I. Cedar, retired from the ministry, was seeking to do good in his operation of the city rescue mission. Ah, oh, my children. Don't those words show we have much for which to be thankful? Among the members of the audience were Arnold Booth, John Travis, and Audville Atkins. We got religion. You nuts, we're just gonna eat and blow the joint. I said we got the spirit. Don't be a nothing brain all your life, Johnny. You got an angle, Arnie? Sure, don't I always have an angle? See, maybe we can get us some overcoats. If the wind goes through this jacket like it wasn't there. And so grubbing a place to sleep, then we'd be living. Uh, any bum can get that. I got smart ideas. This is a good setup. Should there be any among you who wish to acknowledge your faith, please step forward. Be quiet and lead the way. Go on, Johnny. The old guy's looking at us. Oh, why do I always have to do your dirty work? Get going. Yeah, get going. Trusting, gentle Reverend Cedar was happy in the belief that his pleas had nudged three stray sheep onto the right path. And for a short period, at least, they bore out his trust. Welcome, brother. Keep moving. No second, Jew. Thank you, Reverend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend, for your charity. It's given us new hope. We're new men. We're going to look for work. Work? I'm certain you will find employment. Faith works wonders. Amen. And we'll return to help you in your glorious ra uh, work. Thank you, my children. That mushmouth all full. Yeah, but the food is good. And these overcoats, warm, but a lousy fit. The old gent's perfect. What a front that mission is. Maybe, but where are we going to operate? Got it all figured out. We're going to Richmond. I know a market. The type of work that the three men found in Richmond, Virginia, was far from what the Reverend suspected. Mister, uh, be right with you, sir. I'm waiting on this lady. Be right there. I'll decide who's first. Empty that drawer and hand over the cash. Come on, all of it. We're in a hurry, or do you want to get hurt? Here, young man. Oh, quit that yakking, you old fiddle. Don't hurt her, please. Quit then. Nobody will get hurt. The money, all of it. May you be forgiven your sins. Turn off that scripture, old woman. We get plenty of that praying business where we come from. You will pay. Knock it off. What? Did you ever three of them? You know, three of them, they looked like bombs, but meaner looking. Wore long, dark overcoats, all rough characters, and mistreated this old lady. Not so old. But he was a son of Satan. Said he got plenty of praying where he came from. So good to be home, and so welcome. 
Amen. Likewise. I missed you, my children. Did you find work? Not yet, but we're not downhearted. You've taught us too well. We have faith. Booth and his friends absented themselves from the mission again a few days later. They took a trip across the state line to North Carolina, paying an unannounced call on a local service station. Check the oil, boss. station attendant recovered, but his description that it was three rough-looking characters in dark overcoats was of little help. Having netted $160 in the robbery, Booth, Atkins, and Travis returned to their adopted home. Come in. Come in, my children. Reverend, we got something to tell you, if you can spare your children a moment. Always time for you, my sons. We found work. Delightful. You see, you placed your trust in the right hands. We know, and we're grateful. And we wish to share our good fortune with you, sir, uh, and the mission. But tell me, what is your work? We're carpenters. Ah. A trade of great biblical significance. We wish to stay with you, our spiritual advisor, but we'll pay for our board and keep. Uh, how about uh, five dollars a week? Generous indeed, but it'll go toward helping those less fortunate. Well, it's okay with me. Here's my contribution. Blessed is the giver. It'll be safe enough here for the present. Our place is in the mission account at the bank tomorrow. Unhappily, all are not as good as you three. Bless you, brother. Hey, bud, bring us another round. Let's see your money. And there's more, chum. Now get us them drinks fast. You don't get that kind of money with that tambourine. What would a nickel dropper like you know about that? Well, get us them drinks or we'll blow this crummy joint. I'd probably be better off if you bums did just that. Smash sit, sit down, Artie. Maybe some dames will come in. In this joint? Where do they come from? Out of the woodwork? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's more like it. Now get us some company. Drink up and get out. You look like trouble to me. We're just three little lost sheep. That's what I want. Whiff and poof. Get lost, sheep. I suppose you'll call the cops, Arnie. No, Artie. He don't want no cops any more than us. Anyways, we're clean in this town.
The bartender did call the police, but no reason was found to charge them with anything stronger than being drunk. This is a serious complaint against your department, Captain. Haven't your men anything more important to do than to worry hard-working, decent citizens? Well, that we do. I suppose you're referring to some of your mission bums. Bums? That's exactly the attitude that are keeping my people down. Oh, no. Besides, the three I'm referring to are respectable men. They're redeeming themselves with good works. Fine. What do we got them charged with? Drunk? Maybe I can help. I don't need your help. I already have them out. Do you know they were picked up and questioned like common criminals? That all? Then you have nothing to worry about. They must be clean. Clean? Clean, they certainly are. Imagine being picked up and questioned because a bartender was suspicious of their having money. They earned that money. And heed my warning. Don't bother them again. Using the mission as a base, the trio beat and robbed an elderly lady of $200. They followed with the holdup of a salesman in Charleston that netted $500. But Booth was scheming for something more profitable. And what he decided on was cruel and impractical. Cute idea. What? A snatch. Kidnapping? That ain't nothing a fool worth. Ah, oh, this'll be a cinch. Got a real pigeon. Who is it? Oh, you're kidding. Oh, he ought to get 50 grand for his old hide. He ain't got no scratch. Oh, you nothing heads. What about the bank account? <laughs> He's got loving relatives. Besides, the old goat's well thought of. In the city will probably take up a, a collection to get him back. <laughs> they won't let no harm come to a sweet old screwball like him. $50,000. They put their plan into operation on November 1st. Come in. Come in on him. And you too, Audrey. It's nippy tonight, Reverend. <laughs> And you without gloves on it. We must do something about that. We will look through the collection. <laughs> gloves would be nice, and thank you, Reverend. But tonight we're giving, not taking. And you've told us that giving is more blessed. True. True. The Holy Scripture tells us that... But I'm happy you remember. Arnie and me listen real close to you, Reverend. Better than anybody, except than maybe John. Yes, you have. And where is John? He's waiting outside. Invite him in. But tell me, what you are giving and to whom? To you. Coals for the mission, for the winter. None of the sheep will freeze. We'll heap coals on the devil's head. Coal for the winter. Bless you. Thank Audville, too. But how? Audville's got relations with a coal mine. They've made us welcome to scrap coal for the mission. The Lord truly does work in wondrous ways. Uh, I helped a little. Now, Reverend, will you get your coat and we'll be on our way. Me? Where? It's stored in a mine shack. Uh, Audville's relations want to make certain. Uh, unfortunately, Audville's been a bad boy several times in the past. Uh, snuck coal out and sold it. I'm sure Audville meant no harm. Nary a bit, Reverend. Then you'll come? Certainly. Anything for the mission. Good, good. We have a truck out back. <laughs> Borrowed it for the cause. There are many small mines, some active and some abandoned, in West Virginia's hills. The Reverend Cedar was taken to an abandoned mine shack in a deserted area. A perfect hideaway. Stand. Yeah, you will. Just make yourself comfy, old man. My children, where is the coal for the mission? Here it is. That's enough. He's worth 50 grand. Why wasn't this man reported missing immediately, Captain? Well, no one, so they say, thought it strange at the mission. They thought he'd wandered off on one of his do-gooding projects. Then came the rude awakening, this. 
$50,000. What about it? Well, if this wasn't so serious, I'd call it a joke. The mission doesn't have any money. Living from hand to mouth, you might say. The hands of the public to the mouths of the derelicts. Hmm. Any relatives? None with any money like that amount. Might as well be two million. So, the kidnappers have merchandise that no one can afford. And all we have is a piece of paper here, no clues, and a cold trail. We've checked out all the known criminals around Huntington. What about the mission? A blank. Nobody knows anything. Some of the bums wandering in can't even remember their own names. Well, there must be a pattern here somewhere. Action was immediate when authorities were notified of the Reverend Cedar's strange absence. Police desperately worked around the clock. Men searched the city and countryside, even employing bloodhounds. Because of the victim's trust and daily association with derelicts and seedy characters, transportation lines were methodically checked. All freight depots and terminals were pinpointed. But the trail was cold, puzzling, and unrewarding. It was slow, tedious work checking out unsolved crimes in the area, but we kept at it. Then five days after the Reverend was reported missing, one of the kidnappers phoned the mission demanding the $50,000. He was told that they had no money and hung up in anger. We were advised at once, but we could not trace the call. But, but wait a minute. The mission can't afford 50 cents, let alone $50,000. Now listen, what? Operator? Operator, listen. Trace that call. My children. My three children. Children, we're still his kids. Shut up, old man. You make me nervous. Next time, I won't miss. It wouldn't hurt anyway. It's soft coal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that booth ought to be getting back. I'm sick of this joint. Me too. Artie. You don't suppose Arnie would skip out on us if he got the money? No. I better go look for him. And leave me here with him? No, you don't. Scared? No. But maybe you got an idea uh, about not coming back. You and Arnie. Pull yourself together. Oh, no, you do. <laughs> What's going on in here? You two guys goofy, letting the old guy get away? Ordie was trying to skip. I was just going to look for you, Arnie. I thought maybe you was in trouble. We're all in trouble. The old guy's hide ain't worth a nickel. You hear that? Ain't worth a nickel. They won't cough up? Nothing? He wanted coal for his mission, he'll get it. The trio left the Reverend for dead. The next day, November the 11th, a young hunter passing the shack heard groans, discovered the body and called us. We had not identified the kidnappers, but the fear was narrowed some. The Reverend had said, my three children, and we took that to mean three of his derelicts. 
Among the unsolved crimes, we found several in which three gunmen who looked like dialects were described. In the drugstore holdup, one had said, we get plenty of that praying business where we come from. Then the captain remembered that the Reverend had interceded for three men, men who had been in trouble in a bar. Bartender was certain he could identify them, as were the victims in the holdups. But first we had to find them and prove that they also were the kidnappers. I quickly learned that derelicts look much alike, for I became one. I wasn't living the life of Riley and was about ready to give up when on December the 14th, the break came. These three men answered the description of the suspects. Sing real loud. We know the ropes around here, Bo. David, it's gonna trouble him and got a scratchy throat. Coal dust. The coat was saturated. I decided to pick them up on suspicion. Unless they were coal miners, they had a lot of explaining to do. Are you a coal miner, Travis? No, you rat. Enough coal dust on that overcoat to heat this office, eh, Tyler? And I suppose you were never in a coal shack in your life either, huh? No. Travis, I'll level with you. We've got witnesses that'll tie you into a half a dozen robberies, an assault, and a shooting, and your partners also. But you're gonna take the rap for this kidnapping and murder all by yourself. Because you're the only one with the overcoat and all that coal dust. And another thing, I'll bet you didn't get any of that grand that was paid out on the kidnapping either. Grand. That's right, a thousand dollars, all good. A thousand dollars, them crumbs, they, they didn't give me a penny of it. But uh, you see, it was all Booth's idea. Uh, Ordy went along with him. Uh, I, I, I was just there for the ride. Honestly, I, I, I just drove the car. Guy asked you to drive a car, you gotta do a thing like this for him. I didn't know what they were gonna do. Honored Booth, John Travis, and Audville Atkins were tried and convicted under West Virginia's kidnap law. Lamenting the wages of sin, they remember that much of the Reverend's teaching. They were sentenced to hang at the state prison at Moundsville. This unholy trio which tried to hide behind good works paid the supreme penalty. Now in a moment, a gangbuster clue about a person still at large and wanted by the police. Attention. Attention to all citizens and police. Dangerous woman at large. Leota Lavon Werner, 45, about 5 feet 4 inches, weighs 130 pounds, brown eyes, has mole on right cheek, mole on right cheek, long scar, inner left forearm, scar, inner left forearm. Leota Werner is charged with fleeing across a state line to avoid prosecution for murder. Leota Werner is believed carrying a 22 caliber revolver and should be considered dangerous. Be on lookout for Leota Lavon Werner, 45, 130 pounds, mole on right cheek. If you have any information concerning this clue, please notify your local police, the FBI, or gangbusters at once. Next week, another gangbuster case, taken from authentic police files and records. Until then, on behalf of the police, we invite you to join us.
Gangbusters, created by Phillips H. Lord. The case you have heard tonight was based upon police records, court records, and personal interviews. 